Hello learners, let us talk about the types of ore deposits that we find associated with magmatic rocks. In the magmatic rocks also we have some variations, those which are produced under plutonic condition or with a slow cooling of the magma, those which are produced by quick cooling of the magma and so on. Right now we only confine to such mineral deposits or such ore deposits which are produced by quick or rapid cooling of the magma. And one of the best examples of that is what we see on the mid-oceanic ridges. And we get a very perfect view of what is happening on the mid-oceanic ridges through underwater cameras and underwater technology. And because of that, we are able to find very, very clear view of various types of magmatic activity that is taking place. We have monitor effect of deep ocean drilling on this large seafloor and to see how what we observe is, is scientifically substantiated or not. And then we have also through this understood the life history of the strange type of blind shrimps and other types of tube worms and that occur on the seafloor associated with mid-oceanic ridges. So we have therefore understood that our improved knowledge of the metal munching microbes that flourish on the hot springs may help us to clean up the contaminated land that we do because of the mining because bio leaching can be very very helpful thing in containing the mine spills and also tailing spawn that we have on the land mine. So our newly discovered hot spring hold many many clues and the studies of the falls that cut uh, the pristine ocean floor can also give us important insight into faulting of oil reservoir again which have an application and it will also have a additional application because it will help us to understand the DNA. Hydrothermal mineralization which is the topic of our present discussion process has advanced from a local to global scope through sequences of discoveries. Uh, first started from the Red Sea in 1960s and in the Indian Ocean in subsequent time. So in the Indian Ocean two areas of our interest are the Andaman Sea, uh, back arc and its subduction zone also and the mid Indian Ocean ridge system. But both these environments are likely to be site of not only hydrothermal deposits but they are also likely to be of different types of ore deposits that we will, uh, we will subsequently talk about. Now the hydrothermal ocean ridge formation is the spreading center. You can understand very clearly how the magma comes up and how it gets split and then finally in the last phase how a black smoker is generated. This can also be substantiated by looking at the sea floor spreading, I have, uh, the main spreading axis where transfer falls and all these together make a good tectonic setting up. Uh, very good uh, system for transport of heat and chemicals and the thermal capacity of the order of this which will help move the magma. So this cartoon will tell you actually from land to mid-oceanic ridges. The left side green side is land and in the center is the mid-oceanic ridges and you will see a lot of parallel lines. That parallel line actually indicates the spreading that as we go away from the main axis you will find older, older and older oceanic crust. So the oldest oceanic crust will be away from the main thing and the newest will be or the what is forming at present is this. You will also see on this small mounts which are called the sea mounts and the rest is a plain or the pelagic plain. Now all these three locations are useful for mineral formation. The plain pelagic is the area where we get sedimentary ores, what we call the manganese nodules on the Sea mount, we get cobalt crust again, a mixture of hydrothermal and uh, hydrogenous deposits. And on the mid oceanic ridges, that is the topic of this discussion, we get the formation of volcanogenic massive sulfide or polymetallic metal sulfide because it contains more than one metal. And in the subduction process, as I mentioned, that in the Andaman Sea, we have the subduction process, subduction zone, and backyard situation. So, this cartoon explains how subduction takes place and how it results into formation of island arcs and then uh, the back arc. So, all these geological phenomena can be summarized by looking at this diagram. You will see how cracks, through the cracks, water seeps, and then that water gets into the magma chamber. And slowly that hot magma ch uh, chamber coming in contact with the water 
discharges everything, mix everything and then it begins to spew out through certain weak planes and resulting into what we call as the chimneys or black smokers or hydrothermal chimneys. So the saline hydrothermal system can be explained that seawater penetrates in the ocean floor through the land mass or through the uh, cracks and then it's very different chemistry and then it gets converted into more and more material gets uh, squeezed out because of the hot temperature it gets completely mixed with it and it is full of pressure and full of energy and it is looking forward to some weak plane through which it can come. You can see that how eventually a magma is coming out and this lava that is coming out in form of uh, pillows, in form of sheets, in form of lobes and all that and this is only one example to show how pillow lava is produced on the uh, mid-oceanic ridges. Okay, so once this lava is uh, produced, it begins to cool down and when it begins to cool down, then of course it is completely solid. But in between as I mentioned, you have the chimneys and that uh, the, already we showed that these black smokers are the chimneys. They are actually can be explained by the understanding of this cartoon that how this magma comes out from the sideways, the seawater comes, seeps it, goes into, comes in contact with the heat and that because of that it's looking forward to recharge and come out through a chimney which is described here. So that chimney can be explained in terms of chemistry that various types of metals, various types of elements get absorbed and dissolved and then it can be understood completely. The importance of this diagram is not only the metals, but when it comes out the, through the chimneys, it will make a wide spread or what we call as a, a big halo. And that halo is helpful to us in locating these deposits even from uh, the sea surface because it makes good dispersion pattern of elements and that will help us as indicator for various types of elements can be taken for as an indicator to locate the sulphide chimneys. So the hydrothermal solution to sum up starts with a, uh, with a solution, the soluble mineral load in form of mineral deposits and how does this happen? So the causes of precipitation is that hydrothermal solutions flow rapidly in an open fracture mass and it is shattered through the rock and then that layer porous goes in and then it slowly cools down and then in the short distance it results in the rapid precipitation. And that rapid precipitation can be explained by this that various types of uh, animals also come together. Not only you have the metals but that is what is shown here and eventually what comes out is something like this. You have the black chimney, you can see mineralization completely uh, with copper and uh, zinc minerals. This is an autonomous uh, remotely controlled vehicle but before that one also has to undergo uh, bathymetry of the thing. So this uh, cartoon explains to us how we measure the seafloor and so we get an idea about the seafloor and then we begin to do it. You can see how an active chimney is smoking out. Not only there is a one chimney but there are also sideways so it is generally a cluster of group of uh, many chimneys that will make together and this is uh, various types of lavas. I showed in one of the earlier slides that the, when the lava is coming out it makes various patterns. This is an example of how lava is produced as a pillow lava or pillow shape and similarly you can have other. This is an example of this lava is a sheet lava and the, what you see yellow here is native sulphur. So you can see whatever extra sulphur is there, it gets precipitated and interestingly there is a small fish. So basically it is a question of nutrient available. So when fish, uh, when there is a sulphur, there is a nutrient and the animal life grows there. This is again an example to show how crabs and other types of uh, fishes are very close to the black smokers because of the nutrients and most of the sampling of these is done by remotely operated vehicles which have its own arm so one can collect or we have collected absolute chimney uh, path that you can see here.
Now, there is also another aspect of it of biomass and just I want to underline that biomass will be a very, very important aspect of seafloor studies because eventually one hopes that through the biomass we will be able to understand the evolution of life. One also has to understand how at minus 2 degrees to that much 400 degree temperature animals can still sustain such a huge variation of temperature and all those aspects related aspects we have to see. But imagine that suppose this is, is coming as a 350 or 400 degrees temperature and coming in contact with seawater which is 2 degrees temperature, what sort of chemical changes and other parameters will be important in generating the types of mineral that we are looking forward to. And this is an example of a basalt, it has been completely quenched and mineralized. So you can see the part in which you have the central holes coming. These are the places where the tube worms are coming and the tube worms of course they, they get nutrient here so they come out again and then the hole is then filled by the precipitates in form of beautiful crystals that in the close up you can see more of these that in the tube worm has come out but whatever you can see the hole is filled with zinc sulfide or sphaleride. So similarly you can see the right uh, below part of this uh, as totally sphaleride rich. And in the polished section when we can see we can see absolutely superb euhedral pyrite with uh, dark yellow as chalcopyrite. So there is absolutely clear cut example of crystallization uh, in these and that crystallization is one aspect but another part this can also be completely amorphous as you will see in this slide that everything is amorphous. It is just pyrite and uh, mercosite, little bit of zinc but totally amorphous substance. You can also have dendritic pattern in them as you can see in this pattern. Now what is the average metal content? Our results from the uh, ship uh, on board Sonnet, the results of uh, leg 3 shows following results. You can see zinc content and copper content and look at that when such rich copper 14.47 zinc 2 percent. If copper is high zinc is less, if zinc is uh, more copper is less. So that shows two types of relationship, one is high temperature other is slightly low temperature. So that means chalcopyrite is generally high temperature and zinc is low temperature. So at the, in the chimney itself there can be a lot of variation and you can again see its uh, corresponding other metals. But our economic interest is of course in copper and in zinc. In zinc we get silver associated with that example and similarly for copper we can expect gold associated with it. Now try to look at quickly on the ocean floor where all do we get these sort of deposits. In the Indian Ocean which is our interest we can see that in the mid Indian Ocean ridge there is a spot given that is the area and little south of it now recently we have uh, found or India has also put a claim to explore for volcanogenic massive sulphide or polymetallic sulphide. More of it you can find in the mid Atlantic ridge on the extreme right side of the slide you can see and in the Pacific Ocean on East Pacific rise. Eventually whatever one does for production or one does for ocean mining or land mining there is always economics involved. So one has to see how it compares with the market prices, whether it will be profitable to do this because there is a huge investment required in this process. Not only development of new technology but a lot of a lot of investment is required in developing new and new equipment. One hopes that in future when uh, this will happen then there will be more and more of automation, more and more of uh, less human and more automatically controlled. This will save time, no danger to the people who are working in that area and uh, many things like that. So many there are several places in the world where you have good polymetallic sulphide discovered. Learners. We have discussed how ores are formed, we have discussed how ores are being formed at present and how this present day forming ore deposits will help us, can help us to understand how the ores must have been formed in the past. And this will help us to plan our better strategy for exploration on the land. So each 
through the understanding of the modern ore deposits or process of formation of ore deposits, we can apply this to understand the ancient ore deposits on the land. And this will be a big achievement and it will save us a lot of time and money and help us in new discoveries even on land. Thank you.